A man with no arms or legs sets out on a mission to climb the highest mountain in Africa. She was like, you're crazy. Like, how do you think you're going to go and do killing the jar? And I told her, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. See how he did just that on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi, and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. Our story about Kyle Maynard's epic climb is coming up in a few minutes. Set your DVRs to record today's show. It's a story you will want to watch again and again. But first, he's back. Studio 5's Ephraim Graham is here to bring us the latest in entertainment news, starting with today's top five. Take a look. At number five, quarterback Robert Griffin III is back in the game in Cleveland, and he's grateful. All you can do is come out here and, and show the talents that God's blessed you with and, and continue to work hard every day. So I think everybody's coming out here knowing um, that nothing's guaranteed. RG3 was a shining star for the Redskins in his rookie season, but sat on the bench all of last season and lost his job to Kirk Cousins. It truly is a blessing to be able to play this game. Act number four. <laughs> there was the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Then the 22 push-up challenge to bring attention to the 22 military veterans who commit suicide every day. Chris Pratt and his wife, Anna Ferris, lent their muscle to the cause. Do them. Drop and give me 22. Uh, uh. Water for you, she's strong. And now there's the So Gone Challenge. Mm -hmm. People use a moniker So Gone. My favorite you know, Monica song. It started out with Chance the Rapper. Heard it was a So Gone Challenge, man. I said, no way. And this challenge is taking on a gospel twist. My assignment is to face the devil and defeat him by being the lyricist to advance the people in the kingdom. I don't have to wonder Jesus loved me from the start. See, all he wants from us is to open up our hearts. That brings us to number three and... Fix my eyes, my eyes on Christian rockers for king and country. And gospel recording star Ty Tribbett will host this year's Dove Awards. And it could be a big night for Christian singer and songwriter Lauren Daigle. She is the top nominated artist with six nominations, including Artist of the Year. Coming in now at number two. I'm here by myself and I don't know how to handle this. Oh, I just started praying. This 93-year-old Detroit woman is on a mission to thank the man who stopped to help her when her car stalled on the interstate. The black man kept saying to her, I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you. And in today's racial climate, those words stuck with her. I think it's so unfair. We're all created equally. There's no difference, none. Is that why he felt the need to tell me that he was here to help? Alice put her thoughts in writing, sending a letter to the Oakland Press. She hopes it reaches the Good Samaritan whose name she can't remember. She just wants to say thank you. I give him a hug. And at number one. He was a walk-on. Now he's an All-American. The incredible story of Brandon Burlesworth is now the film Greater, hitting theaters Friday. We've just heard that right guard Brandon Burlesworth has been a first-team All-American. Ah! Neil McDonough plays Brandon's brother. How familiar were you with Brandon's story? I had heard of the story. Um, I wasn't completely familiar with it, but you know, I knew of the story. And we're sitting in traffic, my wife, Reve, and I. Uh, she says, honey, get an email on this, this film about Brandon Burlesworth. I'm like, Brandon Burlesworth, a football player, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, she goes, there's, there's a script here with it. And I'm like, well, we're stuck in traffic on the 10 freeway in Los Angeles. I'm like, start reading. <laughs> and by page three, I was, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're already bawling by page three. Ephraim Graham joins us now. Nice shirt, by the thank way. Thank you, thank you. I like yours too. I asked, uh, I asked Ephraim to tear his sleeves off so we look a little bit <laughs> Just different. Just a little bit different. So this movie, Greater, tell us about your experience covering the film. Oh, I tell you, I actually covered the film more than a year ago. Uh, it was scheduled to be released. We were running commercials for it, uh, and then it saw a delay, mainly because it could not get as many theater screens as it wanted to. It screened well, and they wanted a wider release, mm -hmm. and it is a great story. If you're not familiar with this uh, football player story, it is the greatest walk-on story ever. I mean, he is a 
a walk-on and becomes an All-American. Um, but And his faith, his mom's faith, beautiful. Uh, unfortunately, the story, if you're familiar with it, has a tragic end. Literally, he gets drafted and dies in a car accident on his way home to go to church with his mother 11 days before he was to start. And that's not necessarily a spoiler because people know the story right. and it's all There's part of how it's woven together. Yeah. Yes, yes. So when will it be released? This will be released on Friday in theaters all across the country. Neil McDonough, um, who many are familiar with from Arrow and a lot of other films, he plays uh, Marty Bolsworth, Burlsworth, is essentially uh, the brother. Uh, and we watch a transformation in him, watching his uh, brother and his mother deal with tragedy. It answers that that age-old question, why why did bad things happen to good yeah. people? How about this So Gone Challenge? What exactly <laughs> is it trying to bring attention to? You know, I, I've, yet to re, I've yet to release my video. I, I've yet to release mine. I thought we might try something together here, but I, I won't. We're dressed for it. No, yes. It is uh, a, a popular Monica song, and this song or challenge from Chance the Rapper has taken on many incarnations. You saw some of them, many of them people doing gospel music as a result. But there's also a romantic twist to at least one of them. Can I ask you, mm -hmm. what's the challenge for? For you to create your own rap based on the Monica song. That's, now it. This, that's it. That's it. And you name it, from Kevin Hart to football players to basketball players to everyday Joes <laughs> posting their videos. I mean, millions and millions of people doing this. Two million, I think, on Twitter now. But there's a romantic twist to this one that I want you to take a look okay. at. That took yeah. some courage. Didn't yeah, it? I think his last line was, "I had a talk with God, and He said you're missing one thing, and that's why I'm giving you a ring." So Not good for man to be alone. No, she said, yes. she said yes. She said yes. She said yes. Wedding to come, possibly on video as well. Of course, also you covered the story of this 93-year-old woman looking for yeah. her good Samaritan. That's Absolutely. touched a lot of hearts. It has. It has indeed. Unfolded right there in Detroit. Uh, he. She literally, when a car stalls, she gets out and realizes that the repair that's needed, she can't handle. And she says, you know, God, I need your help. I'm alone on this interstate, 93. Uh, and she prays, God, help me. And a gentleman literally comes over, and he is so conditioned that he knows that in this racial climate, this being an older white woman could possibly be afraid of him. She says she wasn't. She didn't even see that. Uh, it wasn't until she got back home and, and thought about what was going on in the world that she realized, oh, maybe that's why he kept saying, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to hurt you. And then she felt bad that he thought he had to literally apologize before he could lend a hand. Hopefully they'll reconnect. Absolutely. I, that is the prayer. At the beginning of your top five, of course, you talked about RG3. High hopes in Cleveland while Redskins fans in Washington <laughs> may be a bit cynical, but but he's optimistic for the season. He, he is optimistic for the season. And, you know, uh, to, to watch someone literally uh, lose the job that they loved and adored uh, and to suffer and endure that year the way he did, it's nice to see that his heart still loves the game and he still gives all credit to God for the talents that he has. Uh, and he is going to give it another shot. He's blessed to have the opportunity and it's nice to see he realizes, I'm blessed. And you know, this is, he said, uh, a child's game. We're all blessed to play it and to get paid as well as we do to do it. Uh, so. I mean, he, sure, he's probably thinking, well, LeBron could do it in Cleveland. Maybe he could do it in Cleveland. And he's out of that pressure cooker in D.C. You so got maybe, that right. Maybe he's relieved. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. My you pleasure. Always enjoy it. If you want to watch Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5, there's a few ways to see it. You can watch it on Roku, Apple TV, or go to CBN.com forward slash Studio 5. And again, we thank you for being here. Again, nice shirt. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. <laughs> well, coming up, he has impeccable handwriting, and he types 50 words a minute. Kyle Maynard is also a Georgia State wrestling champion, and he does all this with arms that end at his elbows and legs that end at his knees. So how does he do it? With no excuses, as you'll find out. That's coming up.
You're about to meet a man who lives by the motto, no excuses, even though he could make plenty of them. His name is Kyle Maynard, and he was born with no arms and no legs. Kyle has never been one to back down from a challenge, and that attitude propelled him all the way to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Wes Rickards brings us his inspiring story. Kyle Maynard is tough, real tough. He's a champion wrestler. He studied Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He can bench 420 pounds. And every day, he conquers the impossible. Emerson said, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Kyle began leaving a new trail the moment he entered the world. He was born without arms or legs, the result of a rare condition known as congenital amputation. Yeah, my, my parents, they had just normal, normal pregnancy. They went and saw the ultrasounds and the doctor saw that there was really nothing out of the ordinary. So they really had no idea that anything was gonna happen, you know, yeah, that it'd be born different until I was. Normally, congenital amputation only affects a finger or a toe. In this case, Kyle was left with no limbs, and his parents were left with questions on how to raise their child. What really blows me away is the decisions that my mom and dad made. They had to make when they were super young. You know, my mom, she was more of like the nurturing type and wanting to help me with stuff and help me figure out how to go and do things and didn't want to see me struggle. My dad realized that by helping me do everything wasn't going to be the best solution to the problem. I'd say like, you know, and learning how to eat, you know, he's got to figure out how to eat on his own or, or starve. As you can imagine, it wasn't easy, but Kyle learned the basics and soon, he wasn't just able to do the things others could do, he was doing them better. My mom tells a story about when like got in the closet and ripped all the clothes off the rack and she was like partially a little ticked off at me but partially like, wow, this is cool, like, you know, he did that. By the time he reached middle school, Kyle wanted to take it up a notch. One day he told his mom he wanted to go out for the football team. His mom called the coach and the coach said, sure. So I was a nose guard playing in the middle. I thought I was gonna be the quarterback, but that was a whole other story. I remember the very first football game that I played in, and one of the first plays that they ran was coming right up, right up the middle. You know, and I remember that moment in my, the way I'd tackle people was taking my helmet and smashing it into their legs as hard as I could. In that moment, it was like I, I had found an 11-year-old, you know, version of purpose in life. At the time, Kyle was just a sixth grade kid who had to work twice as hard to get half as far. His parents, who were Christians, had assured him that there was a grand plan for his life. Now, Kyle understood. His goal, see the impossible, beat the impossible. And I definitely, you know, was at a pretty big depth of despair at 10 years old and, you know, and really had a lot of fear over what the future was gonna be. And I was definitely at a point where I lost a lot of hope, you know, just didn't see a reason even to go on. And I really think that making my first tackle in football might have been what, you know, nearly saved my life. That moment fueled a competitive nature inside Kyle. So after football, he took up wrestling. And soon he was winning matches. And it wasn't long before the no-legged men winning the butt-kicking contests became a media sensation. He wrote a book called No Excuses. He also became a popular motivational speaker who made dozens of TV appearances. He is one of the most inspiring young men you will ever hear about. He's strong too, I might add. <laughs> Kyle Maynard is tough. He has to be. He has no arms or legs, but he makes up for that with an indomitable spirit, one buoyed by a faith in Christ. Part of, of Christ's message was teaching us so that we could go and do way more than we think that we can. You know, he'd tell a mountain to move from here to here and it'll do it, right? And we can go and think of that like figuratively, like, oh, okay, yeah, it's just a saying, whatever. But like, no, I mean, like, what if that's the literal, what if that's the literal truth and we're just sort of like, well, okay, it's just a saying. We're so quick to go and dismiss the fact that we're able to go and do these amazing things too. And I think that being connected to something bigger than ourselves is the only way to, to reach that place. Now, normally, this is where a story ends. You have your hero, face the great obstacle, 
overcomes it, and lives happily ever after. But in Kyle's case, this is where his story really begins. My message is a pretty simple one. After high school, Kyle went on the speaking circuit. But before long, Kyle considered doing something he'd never really done before, quit. I put on like 25, 30 pounds in like a three or four month book tour. It was just this period of time where I was just like, blah. People would say to me after a speech that my story was inspiring and all that. I know that their intent was that it would make me feel good, but a lot of times it didn't. You know, a lot of times it just made me feel different. During this time, Kyle came up with a nickname for himself, the depressed motivational speaker. I was alone. You know, I would be traveling. I'd be up in a hotel room by myself. You know, I, did, I was 19 years old, 20 years old. I'm speaking on stage with senators and presidents and, like, you know, for Fortune 500 companies. And it's like, who am I to go and tell you guys how to run your business? Like, it was crazy. And I think a big part of it was I did not feel, like, authentic with the message that I was sharing. I didn't feel like, like I was actually living the message that I was talking about. And then a turning point a chance meeting at an airport with two soldiers who said they saw Kyle on TV and were inspired by his life. You know, I think that made a huge difference in, in learning to accept that, embrace it, and wanting to be anything that I do, put my feet into, be the best in the world that I can be. You know, I'm competitive, and I think that, that was a big game changer for me. In 2011, Kyle met a Gold Star mother. Her son, Corey Johnson, had been killed in Afghanistan earlier that year. She told Kyle that her son had always wanted to travel and see Mount Kilimanjaro. And soon, Kyle had a new challenge. I told my friend that night, I'm gonna climb Mount Kilimanjaro. She was like, you're crazy. Like, how do you think you're gonna go and do Kilimanjaro? And I told her, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Kilimanjaro has been called the house of God. It's so high that climbers will pass through five ecological zones before getting to the summit. Temperatures range from 80 degrees at the base to minus 15 degrees at the top. It's a taxing climb for anyone, but Kyle wouldn't back down. I've got some really amazing people in my life that I've been so fortunate to have that when I say something crazy like that, instead of them telling me, oh, you're crazy, you're not gonna go and do it, most of them are like, wow, that's cool. How can I help? I've got friends that made my gear out of duct tape and duct tape bath towels on the ends of my arms and my feet. I couldn't just go to like the hiking store and like get like a pair of hiking shoes. Like I had to have, we had to come up with a whole new system. Now there are risks to the climb. The higher you go, the less oxygen there is to breathe. You're doing great. The colder it gets, the greater the risk for frostbite. Not to mention the dust or the dry rocks. Kyle was gonna deal with this for 30 miles crawling every inch of the way. Most times, I'm literally, my face is in the dirt, six inches off the ground. Nobody really told me that I shouldn't bear crawl on my elbows and knees for 30 miles before I went. My shoulders and back and hip were shot. My arms, like the swelling in my arms was really intense. So it's this total dichotomy going on of some moments of just intense suffering, like, why am I here? Why did I do this? To other moments of like, wow, this is really cool. This is really beautiful. And connecting to that reason is just why I was there in the first place. After a grueling journey, Kyle was near the top. But the important thing wasn't just how close he was to the summit. It was how far he'd already come. I'm sitting on ice, and I'm looking back, and I could see the entire trail that we'd come up. And it was the wildest thing to go and see. The trail just went on and on and on forever, like out of sight. And I was like, holy cow, like, wow, like, we actually went that far. Like, it's amazing. Hemingway once wrote, all he could see as wide as the world was a square top of Kilimanjaro. And then he knew that there was where he was going. Kyle Maynard was there, 19,000 feet in the air, as the first quadruple amputee to summit the mountain. And once again, he beat the impossible. Uh, <laughs> I held it together at the top uh, until I called my mom and she started crying and I just broke. And I started crying after that too. And a couple moments after that, I got to pay tribute to a fallen soldier. You know, in those really tough moments where I was feeling sorry for myself and ready to quit, a lot of it was thinking, man, he's never gonna get this chance to be here and go and climb this mountain. And it, it really kept me going. It just absolutely was, was the greatest honor of my life. Kyle returned home and earned an ESPY award for his efforts. 
he also came back with a different perspective. And now, he's not just working to conquer the impossible, he's helping others do the same. And I've learned whatever gifts that we've been giving, like you gotta go and share it. And sometimes that means doing things that are uncomfortable that every fiber in your body doesn't want you to do. Then you gotta do it anyway. When I was younger, I did pray a lot that like I would just wake up and have arms and legs. Now I think those prayers have been answered in a, in a totally different way, in a way that I couldn't have ever imagined before. It's come in the form of the learning that I've gotten to have, and that can transcend into anything. Now there's nothing in the world that you could offer me to have me live my life again differently. I feel like it's the biggest blessing I've ever received being born the way that I was. Well, of course, I will echo what so many have said, that Kyle is an inspiration, and we are just so privileged to tell his story here. And obviously, it's... And a living illustration, you know, there's that New Testament scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when we see that life, it really brings it to bear, doesn't it? That the power of Christ to help us overcome the obstacles. And obviously, his story changes our perspective. When we look at our life circumstances and we tend to focus maybe even first thing in the morning on what's discouraging us, what scares us, what, does my, what needs fixing in my life. But Kyle is a man who looks at the challenges and says, I can do this. What have I been equipped with to help me overcome my challenges? And he was honest with us in the story, too, that there were days where he felt like inside he wasn't living what he was saying. But God showed him grace and patience and then led him up that mountain in a marvelous way. Kyle, we thank you for sharing your story with us. Well, still ahead, when her baby was born with a birth defect, her husband left them with nothing. But see how you turn things around for this mother and daughter. That's next. When a woman in Senegal gave birth to her baby, it should have been a day of celebration. But instead, her husband abandoned them, and her mother asked the midwives to kill her child. When Asiatu gave birth to her daughter, Katie, she was saddened by her severe cleft lip and palate, and she wasn't prepared for the reaction by the child's grandmother. She said, your child is a demon. At the hospital, my mother talked to the midwife about killing the child. Things got worse when she got home. Asiatu's husband divorced her because of Katie's condition. After that, mother and daughter were forced to live in isolation. They had no money to move away from the family. And even though Asiatu did other people's laundry for a few dollars a week, there was nothing left over for surgery. It was very difficult. We often did not eat. Then Asiatu learned about CBN and the opportunity for Katie to receive an operation. I thought it was a miracle. This surgery would change everything. CBN arranged for Katie to have the free operation, and it was a success. Then we helped Asiatu and her daughter find a new home and set up a business for her to sell produce in the market. In the three months since we did that, Katie's lip has completely healed and Asiatu is making a good profit from her small business. With the business, I can satisfy all of your needs. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Well, when a baby is born with a cleft palate, one would hope that the local community would rally around that family. But obviously, in this case, the baby was considered a curse and the Mom and child were outcasts in the community. But thanks to people like you, those that are 700 club members, CBN was able to do some wonderful things, not only as you saw supply the surgery, but also get them a new place to live and provide an income for that precious mom. Thanks for joining with us. If you've never partnered with CBN, now's a great day to do so. To be a 700 club partner is just $20 a month, and you can do so by calling 888-777-1999 or just log on to CBN.com. And when you say, I want to be a 700 Club partner, we're going to send you something called Victory Through Life Storms. This is a wonderful teaching to help you get through tough times. We all face challenges and moments when we wonder, God, what are you doing in my life? I really need you in this moment. And this great teaching will lead you to scripture and solid teaching that will remind you of the promises of God. 
Before we leave you today, we want to remind you that you can send us your questions and prayer requests on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash 700 Club Interactive. And don't forget to set your DVRs so you never miss an episode. We leave you with a great scripture, Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Andrew Knox. We'll see you next time on 700 Club Interactive. Bye-bye.